Thank you very much. Okay. The truth about the lies people told me. Lie number one. If you want to succeed in life, you have to know what you want. As a growing up boy in Borongan Eastern Samar, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I had friends, every time they'd be asked as to what do you want to be when you grow up. I would hear answers like, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a policeman, I want to be a soldier. And every time I'd be asked, I'd say, I don't know. I was usually quiet, which is strange. I didn't know. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know if I had a dream. I didn't know if I had ambition. I was born to very poor, but decent and hardworking parents. My father was a bus conductor, conductor ng bus, who got into buy and sell and then eventually got into local politics. My mother was a public school teacher. She taught grade one pupils for 41 years, 11 months, and two days. Tatai would joke, that I would be a good lawyer because I overtalked. Nanai said I would be a good accountant because I could work at the Philippine National Bank, which is the only bank in town, thinking that I can bring home half of the money of the bank. But there was no pressure. They left me alone. I had a happy childhood. After high school, Tatai brought me to Manila. He brought me to the Ateneo de Manila campus. Probably you're asking now as to why my father could afford an Ateneo education. He was doing well in his buy and sell business, but a year after, he had a heart attack. A year after, he lost his business. He went bankrupt. On December 28 of that year, he passed on. My father died inside a taxi cab in the arms of his mother, my grandmother, on the way to San Juan de Dios Hospital in Pasay City. I remember my sister and I in the lobby of the hospital wa walking aimlessly and not knowing what was going to happen because we didn't have the money uh, to pay the hospital for, fa for Tatai, uh, Tatai's body to be released. We waited for like seven, eight hours, and a good uncle came over, paid the bill, and we were able to bring Tatai's body home to Samar to our weeping, grieving, broken mother. When Tatai died, I started to live. When Tatai died, my ambition became clear. When Tatai died, I suddenly realized what it was I wanted to do. What was it? It was to take good care of my mother. It was to provide for her. It was to give her the best life. December 2019, Nanai passed on. And I made her proud. So. You don't really have to know early on in your life as to what you want to do. All you have to do is to show up. Show up, be present, and go for it. Lie number two, success happens to people who work hard. My parents were hardworking, but we were very poor for many, many years. I was working very hard in the big city when Tatai died. I did all sorts of jobs. I sold encyclopedias, shampoos. It's the reason probably why I lost my hair. I sold fire extinguishers. I was, I was a, a tourist guide. I opened doors of restaurants. I was working hard, but I was not successful. Until one day, I saw a line behind the Metropolitan Theater in Loton, in Manila. I didn't know what that line was, but I fell in line. So I was part of an audition for the members of the chorus of the theater. Inside audition hall, I was asked if, do you know how to sing? Do you know how to dance? Do you know how to act? With bravado, I said, yes, I could sing. But I must have been dismal because the auditioner was not very happy. We were asked to go back a week later and see if our name was included in that list. At 4 o'clock in the morning on that day, I was behind uh, the Metropolitan Theater because I wanted to see that list, and my name was there. I became a member of the chorus of the Metropolitan Theater. Two productions later, I was jobless again. I was hungry, I was angry, because I was working so hard. I instead went to the head stage manager. I'm very familiar with the stage. This is my home. This is a safe place, a happy place for me. I went to the stage manager and I said, can I be an assistant stage manager? Can I be a production assistant? Can I be a PA? Because I wanted to live, I wanted to eat. And she said, yeah, maybe you can try. 
So for the next three, four years, I became uh, a production assistant. I was cleaning props. I was sweeping the floor backstage. I was making sure that actors showed up for rehearsals. I was very good. Until one day, I got a call from the boss of the theater. I was being requested to go to her office, 1107 of the Manila Hilton. I, I was asked to be there, and I went, not knowing what it was about. I showed up, and I asked what it was that the grand dame of Manila's 400, she was called the Duyen of Manila's 400, uh, Tita Kunching Suniko, what she wanted from me. And she was busy with her papers, and she said, and I said, good morning, ma'am, my name is Boya Buda, you called for me. Yes, do you want to work for me? But she was not even facing me. And I said, yeah, uh, yes, ma'am, I'd love to work for you. Okay, you can start tomorrow. And I said, but what's the job? And she said, PR. And I didn't know what PR was all about. So I said, Mom, I'm sorry, but what is PR? And for the first time, she turned her back. She faced me, looked at me straight in the eyes and said, I will teach you. That was the pivot of my life. Because she mentored, she taught me, and I was the beneficiary of her kindness. I stayed in the theater. I left the theater years later. From production assistant, I became director for public relations. So success didn't happen because I worked hard. Success happened because a mother was praying for me back home. Success happened because I was not afraid, because I showed up, because I was present and I went for it. Lie number three. When I was about to start my television career, I have one of the most influential friends in the business. We're still friends today. He's still one of the most powerful people in the business. I was doing well in my PR career. I was a high-riding manager. I was representing talents in the country. And he said, can I sit you down? I want to tell you some things. Don't do television. Don't work in front of uh, the cameras. It's brutal. It's nasty. It's not easy. I, I, I pushed further, and I wanted to find out why he was so concerned. And he said, you're not going to make it. Number one, you're gay. Number two, you're not Michelle D. You're not Miss Universe material. In other words, it was a euphemism for you're ugly. Number three, he said, you have this quaint Warai accent. I resented it. You know, uh, but he was telling the truth. And everything that he was saying was true. And I said, what if I use my being gay, my having a Warai accent, my being not so beautiful, as tools to make it in the business. I just wanted to play. And this is about people trying to define the possibilities, people trying to define your boundaries. So I said, I had nothing when I started on television. I had nothing but the truth. Yes, I made it because I was and still proudly gay. I made it because I have this Irish brogue. I have a Warai accent, I'm proud of it. And I'm proud that my, friend, my friend's vision was blurred and he didn't see my beauty. Four, the lie number four is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. That's a lie. That's a lie, think about it. You do good, they do bad. You, do, uh, you say good, uh, they say bad. I'm talking about extreme. I think the golden rule should be rephrased into do unto others, do good, and don't expect anything in return. Say good, and don't expect any good in return. The, that's liberating. In this world, you don't expect somebody to say, hey, you're better than me. So the golden rule should be do good, don't expect anything. Say good, karma is alive. Lie number five. Mark Zuckerberg and company created Facebook. I remember watching that press conference of Mark Zuckerberg and friends, and they said, we are creating this platform because we want to connect people after the university. They lied. He didn't say he was going to be a billionaire. They lied because they didn't say that if Facebook connected people or connects people, it also disconnects, and many others. Uh, I don't wonder why he doesn't aware, he doesn't um, allow his daughters to get into IG or just allows Messenger for his daughters. 
I am often told that you're not going to make it in the business if you are not fiercely engaged in social media. That's not true. You can be the dominant actor in this relationship. Control it by controlling yourself. So um, when Mark Zuckerberg had Facebook, you be careful. Proceed with caution. Next lie. People would say, live within your means. Lie. Live beyond your means, but spend below your means. Go to that uncertain place. Go to that place that is unknown. Go to that place that terrifies you, because that's where magic happens. That's where God resides. That's when you are at your best. It is a space that is inviolate. So don't be afraid. The next lie is, you would hear people say, dance like it's the last night of the world. Don't. Can you imagine dancing at the last night of the world? You must be trembling. You must be anticipating your death. Instead, dance like it's the first night of the world. Dance with joy. Dance with exuberance. Dance with excitement. In anything you do, it should always be dance like it is the first time you're doing it. So again, when someone says, dance like it's your last, slap him. And in conclusion, I'd like to borrow some lines from Miss Taylor Swift, who shakes it off when things uh, go rough. You know, she says, um, players going to play, haters going to hate, I can't sing. Um, Heartbreaker is going to break, uh, faker is going to fake. And that powerful line in that song, and it's like I got this music in my mind saying, it's going to be all right. So ladies and gentlemen, whatever you're thinking, wherever you are right now, be present, show up, go for it. Don't be afraid. Pray, because you have a mother up back home praying for you. And most important of all, it's going to be all right. Thank you.